Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here, and today I'm going to be filming one of my favourite videos, and I know that you guys really like these ones too, and this is going to be my booktube p subscriptions picks my video number four now. Um, so today basically, as if you haven't watched this type of video before, I will link the playlist for you, but basically I go into my booktube subscriptions or my YouTube subscriptions and I make the video based on the most recent one that has been uploaded. It's currently 20 past 10 on the 6th of November. And let's see what we're going to film today. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. I'm just going to do it on my computer. So I'm going to click subscriptions and we'll see what comes up, shall we? So the first video is from El Eleanor Reads Books and it is her non-fiction November haul, which obviously I can't do. I don't do hauls, TBRs or vlogs, obviously, because or wrap ups, because that just doesn't work for me. Um, then there is a video called Spinster's Library, by Spinster's Library, called Did These 100 Novels Shape Our World? So let me find out exactly what that is. So it is, um, she's wrote, written, the BBC just published their list of 100 novels that shaped our world. Here is what I would add. Okay, interesting. So let me see if I can find that um, article that she's on about. So let me go on to BBC. So, okay, so basically um, BBC have published a um, yeah, article called um, The List of 100 Novels That Shaped Our World. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the list um, and I'm going to talk about the ones that I've read, the ones that I own and what I think of them, if I think that they have shaped our world in the way that they say they have um, and yeah, what I think of those. So yeah, let's get started. So the first section is for identity. So there are, I think, 10 novels for each section and for identity, um, they obviously have written 10 different, um, different ones. Now I have, of the list, read only one of them and I have one of them on my TBR. So I'm not going to talk about loads of the others because there's no point in me talking about books I haven't read and I feel like um, I'd just be listing and you can go and read them yourself. As I said, I'll link that article down below for you. But the one that I have read from this list is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Now, I actually buddy read this with Mary from uh, with cinnamon please and we had a great time buddy reading it i didn't love the book but i do think i understand where the identity side of so the bell jar is a um, book about a woman who essentially is having a um, mental health crisis and she um tries to commit suicide at some point in the book and yeah it's obviously written by sylvia plath who i believe actually committed suicide herself at some point um so obviously really really sad and really difficult and i do think that the identity of um, our world there's a lot of mental health that needs to be talked about more recently and so it's definitely something that I think has influenced us I think the bell jar is one of those books that if you say mental health books you do definitely think of the bell jar I do personally think there are other ones that do it better um, but I feel like the bell jar is definitely one of the more classic ones of that I guess so I do understand why it's the one in this list and I am quite excited um, that more people hopefully will read it from this list I definitely would like to read more books from this list so if you want me to definitely let me know um because i'd love to um pick up some of the the books from here um the one i haven't yet read um but i do have on my shelves i believe is half of a yellow sun by chimamanda and gozia Dice. um this one i don't really know what it's about but chimamanda and gozia Dice, i've read a couple of her books and she does talk about kind of like um culture and about um race a lot because i believe she's from nigeria and i've read a few of her books and i absolutely love them she also talks about feminism quite a lot um and one of my f my favorite um short story collection i guess is um Dear Ijewale, um, 15 Suggestions for Feminist Manifesto, I think it's called, um, by her. And she basically has written a set of letters to um, one of her friends who asked her how to raise her child, um, her daughter, as a feminist. Um, so yeah, really, really interesting. So definitely um, a book I want to get to, and I hope that I do that quite soon. There are some others on there that I am really interested in, like Homegoing by Yar Jesse and... Um, White Teeth by Zaley Smith um, but yeah I'm definitely looking I would love to read some more from the list so if you have a look at that list and you let me know which ones you think I should read first uh, but yeah I think identity um, mental health race is, um, mental health race um, lots of um, I think sexuality I'm assuming some of the ones on there might be about sexuality I'm not 100% sure but I definitely think identity is definitely helped there so the next section is love, sex and romance and um, I will again just really quickly go through some of the ones that I have read. So the first one I've read from the list is Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding. Um, this is now um, a series um, that's been made into a TV series which I 
this has been made into movies which most people probably know um i actually really love the books probably a little bit more than the cv uh, than the movies but i enjoy both um bridget jones is a woman who has written a diary she's very honest she's very raw she it's not obviously a true story um but it talks about um she smokes she drinks a lot she is a little bit overweight um and yeah she's just talking about her sex life and about her life in general and trying to lose weight and trying to stop smoking and her job and yeah it's just really interesting and it definitely talks about sex in a very um a raw and honest way and i think that helen fielding has done a great job with it i feel like you actually feel like you're reading someone's actual diary when you read it which i think is great so definitely one that i really enjoy next one i have read and um, i've definitely talked about before is forever by judy bloom i really enjoy judy bloom's writing i think that um it's, she's somebody who i read a lot of as a child and forever was one of the books that really stuck with me now i've reread it more recently and i couldn't connect with the main character and the main character annoyed me so i'm quite sad about that but um i think it was something that really helped me when i was younger and perhaps it's not something that stuck with me or stayed with me throughout um but it's definitely something that i have enjoyed forever basically follows a i think she's 16 um a 16 year old girl named Catherine who is trying to decide whether to have sex with her boyfriend michael and it's kind of about like first love and it's about first like having sex for the first time and whether you're ready and I feel like it's definitely something that shaped me as a child like I read this I think when I was about 15 and it's definitely something that stayed with me it's something that um helps me realize that um you don't have sex just to have sex to have sex when you're ready and I think that it's such an important story and such an important book especially for that sort of age group so Yes, I agree with that very much being on the list. The next one is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which I feel like is a book that everybody knows, even if you don't haven't read it, which I think quite a lot of people haven't, but I think people have seen adaptations or they know the story. Um, Pride and Prejudice um, is the relationship between Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy, who when they first meet, hate each other. And then it's kind of about their love. And I think it talks about first impressions and it talks about class because a lot of it is based on if they feel like they should be with the other person. Yeah, I found that really, I find it really, really interesting and definitely something that I think should be on this list. Um, it talks about um, respect and it talks about, um, I don't know, loving in, in an interesting way. And yeah, I just think it's a great, great book and it definitely symbolizes love, sex and romance for me. Um, yeah, I, I really love Pride and Prejudice. That is the only three off this list that I have actually read. And um, there are quite a few others which I've heard of. Um, but yeah, I think those are the three. So let me know if you've read any of these and if you want to, um, if you think I should read any of these like super soon because I'm definitely interested. Um, yeah, I think the one I'm most interested in from the list is The Passion by Jeanette Winterson. I've heard really good things about Jeanette Winterson and I believe also that she tends to write about um, LGBT characters. So maybe, I think that's probably what, from what I've read, it's probably what's missing off this list is the um, different side of love, sex and romance. So yeah, definitely something that I would definitely would like to read um, in you know more depth. Next up, we have Adventure, which is section three. And again, I have read, I have read two of these books and I think I um, own a few of the others. So talking first of all about the ones I have read, um, the first one is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. This is a um, book that most people know what it is. It's a trilogy and I've actually read all three of the books in the series. It has The Hunger Games, Catching Fire and The Mockingjay, which also has been made into four films. And yeah, I recommend that this series, it's one of the first kind of like dystopian novels that was written, I think. And I really enjoy it. It basically, if you don't know, it follows um a society where there are 12 districts and um each year two tributes are taken from each of the um, districts so there is a male and a female tribute that are then um have to enter into the hunger games which is a basically fight to the death so 24 people fight uh, children between the ages of 12 and 18 fight to the death and only one victor survives and it talks a lot about privilege because there is the capital which is like the head of like the top of the um districts and they they no one kind of goes from the capital i think and it talks definitely about class because the lower down like the higher the number of your district the like lower you are in the hierarchy i guess and yeah it does talk about that it talks about like relationship the adventure side is definitely there i find it really interesting series and yeah i think that definitely it's one that um anybody could read pretty much of any age and enjoy so yeah 
very much a fan of that one and I'm glad it's on this list. Now the other set that I've read is The Lord of the Rings trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien. Again, definitely one that I feel like more people probably have um, like heard of or read. I think I've read the first two books in this, which is The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers. I still haven't read The Return of the King, which is the third one, but I do want to do that. They are very, very heavy books, um, very difficult to read. They're not kind of like your easy side reads if that makes sense um, but yeah definitely something that I would say um, you have to kind of give yourself like dedicate some time to to read but I also really enjoyed The Hobbit by J.R. Tolkien so I enjoy both sides of that so yeah I do think the adventure side is on there if I'm honest I think The Hobbit probably I enjoyed more so I would have said it would be on the list but I think more people probably have heard of The Lord of the Rings and like associate that with adventure so I understand um, so yeah I enjoyed that and then I own two of the other books on this list. So the first one is the His Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman. I actually own all three books of this and I do want to read it. I hopefully will probably read it next year is the hope. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I don't really know what it's about, to be honest. I've heard, I know that there's a movie, the Golden Compass movie, which I do own, I haven't watched. Um, so would definitely do that at some point where I want to read the books first. But I've heard great things. A lot of people love this series. So yeah, it's definitely one that I do hope to pick up, but um, I actually at the moment haven't got. And then the other one I own is actually one I have literally in front of me. So I'll just show you is The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler. I'll just read the back actually because I don't really know what it's about. It says, Marlowe was neat and clean and sober when he called at the Sternwood residence. He liked to be all those things when he was calling on four million dollars. General Sternwood was old and paralysed and philosophical enough to believe a man who fathers two daughters in his fifties deserves all he gets. He was also being blackmailed. The younger daughter was old enough to attract the bloodsuckers and the elder daughter was just trouble in the sheerest silk stockings. A sort of family affair, the sort of family affair that had Marlowe doing his hired gun number deep in the California gang world. So, I mean, I don't really know. I've heard something about this, but I couldn't tell you what it is. So I feel like this could be interesting. I bought this um, really cheap from like a charity shop, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely want to get to it. It's definitely a classic. I feel like loads of people have read this. I think my sister really likes The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler. So I feel like I probably should read it because she doesn't read a lot similar to me, but I feel like this could be really interesting. So yeah, I'm definitely going to pick it up at some point. And like I say, I have it on my shelf, so need to get to that. But yeah, that's all I've, that's the only ones I own from this. I've also heard lots about For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. Haven't ever read any Ernest Hemingway, so definitely something I would pick up at some point. So yeah, I'm interested again, um, which of the list do you think that I should read? And have you read any of them? Let me know. The next section is Life, Death and Other Worlds, which I think is a really important section. So from this list, I have read three, I think. So the first one that I have read is A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Most people know what this is about. I've definitely read the first book. I do actually own like the next three, I think. Um, but I, every time I think about reading them, I realise how big they are and it puts me off. But I definitely will get to them. A Game of Thrones um, is a very high fantasy series that is based on the courts and lots of different perspectives. And it's amazing. I really liked the first book. I particularly enjoyed reading it on audiobook. And I love the way that George R. R. Martin has written the world that he's written I think it's really really interesting very intricate um, and a really really great successful book um, and again the series I've heard although the series is apparently very different is great I've not actually seen any of it and I know that I think season eight just finished and I think that's going to be it I want to say um, but yeah definitely something I want to get to and um, yeah definitely um, but I loved the first one. The second one I have read is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Now personally I really didn't like this book. I would like to reread it at some point just to see if I still have the same opinions. Um, but yeah I found this Frankenstein itself to be, I didn't enjoy the novel, I found it to be too heavy in the writing I didn't enjoy. Um, I know that the story is of morality and it definitely talks about death and about um, monsters and I know that Frankenstein is the doctor not the monster. Um, so yeah, I really do want to reread it, but at the time when I read it, I didn't enjoy it. However, I do really like the story behind it, and I know that a lot of the adaptations have been really good of it. So yeah, it's definitely interesting. I've also read The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, which I think is definitely another world that has been created in a wonderful, wonderful way. Um, I've seen uh, the adaptations of this, quite a few of them, and I love them. Um, and it follows a wonderful, wonderful world, and it's just really homely and lovely. So yeah, another series that I very much... Um, 
say that you should pick up because I think it's fantastic. And the other one I want to say, I haven't read the whole series because I'm pretty sure there's about 60 books in the series or something, but the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett, who by the way is one of my mum's favourite authors and I really want to read more Terry Pratchett or any, I've read a little bit of his books. I've read, um, I can't remember the series. It was like three books. Um, the Wee Free Man, I think it was called. I don't think it's part of the Discworld series, um, but I really enjoyed it. I do really want to read some more Terry Pratchett because like I said, my mum loves him. And um, I feel like now I'm reading more fantasy, I might enjoy it. Cause I did try and read one of them a long time ago when I was much younger. And first I didn't understand it back then. And also I didn't really read fantasy. So I feel like maybe now is the time for me to pick up some of his. Um, but yeah, I do really like the Discworld series. And I think that he definitely, he has a character that's basically death called like mort or something and um so yeah i'm pretty sure the life death and other worlds thing fits very well nicely into that another one i've heard lots about is june by frank herbert i watched um becca she used to have a channel called bex books and she was one of my favorite people she doesn't make videos anymore and i think she's deleted all her videos but she talked about june and said how much she hated it so um i'm kind of skeptical about that one I don't know how I'd feel. I don't even know what it's about. So um, yeah, it's maybe one I would think about picking up. I definitely want to read more on this list. In fact, I think I might make this um, one of my kind of like prompts for next year maybe is to read some of these because a lot of these books are really interesting to me. So yeah, I definitely enjoyed the Dune uh, or had heard a lot about Dune by Frank Herbert. And then there are three lots on here that I have heard of. I don't, I own one of them um, and I've heard really good, interesting things about, so yeah, I would like to get to. The first one is the Earthsea Trilogy by Ursula K. Le Guin. I've heard, I haven't heard specifically about this series, but I've heard lots about Ursula K. Le Guin's writing. I know that she's a fantasy author and I know that Sam from Sam's Nonsense, who doesn't make videos anymore, but I think her videos are still all there. She talks a lot about Ursula K. Le Guin and enjoys her writing. So definitely somebody that I would like to um, read some of, um, but I've heard that her world building is amazing. Then there is the Sandman series by Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman is an author that I read a couple of books of I think and I've enjoyed everything he's written that I've read so far so definitely a series I'd like to get to. I'm assuming, I don't know what books are in that series but um, definitely one ones that I'm interested in picking up. And then another one on this list is one that I'm really excited about because the wonderful Charlie from the channel Charlie Brooke, who I'll link below, she um, loves this book and read it this year and really enjoyed it. So it is The Road by Cormac McCarthy. I actually bought this when she, I have this in front of me by the way, I haven't, like, as I said, I don't plan these videos, so yeah. I'm not just managing to pull books out of thin air because I already know they're there. Um, so yeah, this I don't really know too much about. Um, it follow The film follows the guy from Lord of the Rings, who plays Aragorn, who I absolutely love. Uh, I think it's V some Viggo Viggo Mort Morgensen Mortensen Viggo Mortensen. So this follow it says a, a father and his young son walk alone through burned America, heading slowly for the coast. Nothing moves in the ravaged landscape save the ash on the wind. They have nothing but a pistol to defend themselves against the men who stalk the road. The clothes they are wearing, a cart of scavenged food, and each other. So yeah, this um. I don't know, I, something about this really calls to me. Um, I The book itself has really big writing, so I don't feel like it'd take me very long. Um, I know that Charlie said this doesn't have any like chapter breaks and it's very bleak, but I actually feel like I'd quite enjoy this. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it also won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. It's now a film, sounds great. So yeah, looking forward to reading this one when I get to it. Um, and a massive thank you to Charlie for inspiring me to pick this up because apparently it's on a really good list as well. <laughs> If you haven't already guessed, this video is going to be really long because that's only four out of six uh, out of ten categories. So I'm sorry about that. But this is going to be a long video, but you know what? I enjoy filming stuff that I wouldn't normally. So the next section is politics, power, and protest, which um, sounds really interesting. So the first one I have read off this list. Let's have a look. I've read three from this list. The first one I've read is *The Color Purple* by Alice Walker. I buddy read this with Emily from Novel Novels this year, I think, and it was amazing. It's really stuck with me. It follows. Um, I can't remember their names if I'm honest. I think it's Seely. Is it Seely? Um, but it follows basically a woman who lives in a woman who lives in the South of America, and she um, essentially um, is writing letters to her sister. On the very first page, there is um, rape involved. So if you have, it's uh, so a trigger warnings for that. Um, but basically, she's writing to her sister, who essentially fled because of the abuse that they both um, suffered, and then she gets married Celie does and um it's kind of about the way that she's treated and it's about her f um meeting this woman um and sort of falling for this woman and it's kind of about sexuality race 
it's a beautiful book and I absolutely love it um I would highly recommend that you read it it's really really great and I had a great time buddy reading this one but yeah I understand the politics power and protest side because there's definitely that power balance and um yeah it's a really 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 interesting book next one that I have read on this list which is probably my favorite classic of all time apart from Jane Eyre um is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee I think this book is very successful and I absolutely love it this basically follows two children um this follows two children named Jem and Scout Finch and their father named Atticus Finch now um Atticus is a defense lawyer and he has taken on the case of a black man who has been accused of murdering two white men uh because they raped his young daughter and um basically this is set in 1950s America and so it talks a lot about race and about how the people in the community um, believe that Atticus Finch should not be representing this man because he's a black man so he must have done it and um, he doesn't deserve any defence and things like that. It's such a wonderful story, I absolutely love it. It also has legal elements which I find really interesting as you all know, I love that thing. And yeah, I really really liked this book. And then the third one that I've read from this list is V for Vendetta by Alan Moore. This was a graphic novel um, that I read that I don't really love it. Um, I know that's kind of like, that is a bit of an unpopular opinion. I really wasn't a big fan. This basically follows a man who is um, going against the government, I guess. And yeah, it's really difficult to explain. Um, I feel like a lot of people do really like this one though. So I understand it. And it does have the politics and protest about it, which um, yeah, I really enjoy. I feel like um, 1984 by George Orwell should be on this list if I'm honest, and it's not. However, it might be in one of the other lists, I guess. But the books that I do own uh, that are on this list are A Thousand Splendid Sons by Carla Husseini. You'll know if you watched my October wrap up, which was just went up on Monday, that I read The Kite Runner by Carla Tusseini so I feel like it's probably a book that's set in Afghanistan I'm assuming and um, talks really well about like politics in at least in The Kite Runner it did so I assume A Thousand Splendid Sons is quite similar to that um, so yeah I really want to read that one too I'm very excited about it we also have Brave New World by Aldous Huxley which I don't know what it's about but I've heard really good things and I feel like it's one of those books that everyone's pretty much read or heard of very excited then we have Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi, which I think, is that the one that won the Booker Prize this year? I think so. I haven't read it. I heard uh, Lauren from Lauren and the Books talking about it and also I think Simon Savage. Um, so yeah, it's definitely one that's on my radar. Not one that I've picked up, but yeah, potentially I would. And oddly enough, another one that is in front of me, mainly because the books that I got when I went to see Charlie and Emily are in front of me. And I bought a lot of classics uh, when I went to see them. So this one is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. This is about a plane that crashes on a desert island and the only survivors, a group of schoolboys, assemble on the beach and wait to be rescued. Um, and it talks about, it says, as the boys' delicate sense of order fades, so their childish dreams are transformed into something more primitive and their behaviour starts to take on a murderous, savage significance. So again, I've heard really, really interesting things about this. I love this cover of this book. Um, yeah, and I feel like this also apparently won the Nobel Prize for Literature, which, I mean, that's amazing. So yeah, I feel like this is kind of the power protest. I get the politics side of this as well. So yes, definitely one I do want to get to. And then the other one on this list that I've heard of but haven't read is Noughts and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. This is a, I believe, like a three or four part series. Um, and I thought it was three, but I've just watched Kaz from Cats and Cameras um, birthday, like October book haul. And she picked up the second, like two and three, and said that she thinks there's more. So potentially there is. Um, Noughts and Crosses, I think, is like a flip on the um, black versus white that tends to happen. I think that the black characters are the majority ethnic majority in this book and the white characters are the minority i'm not 100 percent sure and i think it's about two a, a boy and a girl who fall in love one of each one's an x and one's a, uh, well, sorry one's a naught and one's a cross um yeah i'm interested in reading it it's definitely one that's been on my radar for a while the next section is class and society and of this section i have read two the first is a house for mr biswas by vs napal um i read this a couple of years maybe three or four years ago now um and it has really stuck with me and i definitely think that it works the whole um class and society bit of this this follows a man who um marries into this family that don't really approve of him and they he he's trying i don't really know how to explain it um i will link i think i did a review of it i'm pretty sure i did a review so i'll link my review down below that i did because i think that will probably explain 
why I have to say a bit more. Um, but yeah, I'll link that down below. It was a really interesting book and it talked a lot about class and society in the um, world that he lives in, but I genuinely can't really remember too much about the specifics, so I don't want to say it in case I get it wrong. But the other one that I have um, read off this list is Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys, which if you don't know, um, if you've read Jane Eyre, um, you'll know about the character of Bertha. Now I won't go into any detail because I don't want to spoil Jane Eyre for you, but you'll know that Jane Eyre is like my favourite thing of all time. And um, I read Wide Sargasso Sea for my A-level because we were doing it alongside Jane Eyre. And basically it follows the character of Bertha and about her backstory and explains a lot about what happened to her and how she ended up the way that she did and how society treated her and how her class is affecting that so definitely think it belongs in the class and society section i don't think that i've I, there are two uh, three on this list that i've heard of but i don't know anything about the first one is our mutual friend by charles dickens i do really want to read some charles dickens i haven't i don't think i've read any of his books so far so yeah i'm really looking forward to that one I've also heard of The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie by Muriel Spark. Again, I don't know anything about it, but I've heard really good things. And also The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. I have not read anything by that author, but very much looking forward to reading it because I've heard nothing but amazing things. So yeah, ones I want to read. I feel like this section is definitely one I need to read more from because I've literally only read two and haven't really heard of many of the others. Next up, we have Coming of Age. Um, and from this list... I have read three. The first one is obviously the Harry Potter series by JK Rowling. Um, coming of age, I think it happens a lot in the Harry Potter series. Obviously, the Harry Potter series is amazing. It's one that stuck with me. Obviously, it's my childhood favourites. I feel like everybody loves the Harry Potter series. Um, the movies are great too. Uh, and yeah, the coming of age, it definitely, because it follows Harry from when he's 11. Well, literally, it actually follows him from when he's 10, turning 11, um, up until he's 18 I guess so there is that coming of age and also it, throughout it lots and lots of things happen and he comes to terms with a lot so yeah obviously I think that should be on this list somewhere and this is a great one. I've also read The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole aged 13 and three quarters by Sue Townsend. Um, I actually own I think the second book in the series but I really want to get the first one and reread it. Follows a boy named Adrian Mole he's 13 and three quarters and he's living his life and he's going through puberty and it talks about that. It's really well written and I think it's really good insight into the life of a teenage boy and yeah very much love this one um really excited that it's on this list and then the next one is the twilight saga by stephanie meyer i love the twilight saga when i read it i don't particularly wish to reread it now however i will say i'm not sure how i feel about it being on the coming of age list i feel like there are other lists that could have been on more i don't know about the coming of age stuff it's vampire novel if you don't know most people do uh yeah not for sure about that one I've also heard of Emily of New Moon by Ellen Montgomery, which I think is, is that the first book in the Anne of Green Gables series or is that completely separate? I don't know. I've not read any Ellen Montgomery books, I don't think. Um, I do really want to read the Anne of Green Gables series though, so potentially this is a good one to start with. I don't know if this is book one though. I've also heard of Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood. I haven't actually read any Margaret Atwood, but I'm fairly certain that um, Victoria, from what Victoria read, is doing like a Margaret Atwood read along next year. So I really want to join in that because I've heard really good things. I know that Cody from Cody's Book Corner has read a few of her books and I think this was on one of her books that she did or that she um, has read. So yeah, I really want to read this one. I'm excited. And the other one I've heard of is The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. I don't really know anything about it, but it's definitely a book that I've heard good things about. Um, I feel like it's like, was always, to me, I've always heard it as like the first YA novel. I don't know if that's the case or not, but it's definitely one that I would like to get to. Next up, the section is Family and Friendship. And from this list, I have read one, two, I'm doing well aren't I really guys so I've read two of this list the first one I've read was probably my favorite story as a like eight nine year old and that is Ballet Shoes by Noel Stretfield I definitely would like to reread this I can't really even remember what it's about I know it's about a little girl um who starts to learn ballet but literally that's all I remember so I definitely want to reread it I know there was really good friendships and family in this so I definitely think it deserves to be in this list but yeah I definitely want to reread and I've also read um, The Witches by Roald Dahl. This follows a little boy who um, comes across the witches and his grandma tells him about the fact that these witches live in the world and there's like ways of finding out who they are. Like they have blue tongues and they always wear gloves and stuff like that. 
and it's kind of just about that and um yeah i'm interested to read um the witches again i love the i love roald Dahl. um but i did reread one of his books the james the giant peach and really hated it so i'm a bit skeptical to reread any of my other favorites because i'm worried that i'm gonna hate them there is a really good movie of this as well though so i would recommend that but yeah i read that one uh and his relationship the boy's relationship with his grandma is adorable so family and friendship it definitely fits in uh, from this list I've also heard of I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. I haven't he actually read it and I don't know anything about it but I have heard of it. I've also heard of Middlemarch by George Eliot. Again, not one I've even heard like any details about. I just know that I've heard of it. Um, and also The Tenant of Wildfeld Hall by Anne Bronte. I've only read um, one Bronte sister. I've read uh, Charlotte Bronte's obviously Jane Eyre. I haven't read anything from Anne Bronte or Emily Bronte so I need to do that like ASAP. So yeah, really interested in picking this up especially if it's about friends and family because I love that. So then the penultimate section is crime and conflict and of this list I have read two. The first one I've read you all know is one of my favourites of this year and that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I love Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I do actually prefer my cousin Rachel so I kind of wish that was on this list instead but I'll go with it. Uh, basically Rebecca follows a woman who is um, asked she meets a man on uh, when she's working as a companion for this old lady and he asks her to marry him and so she marries him and goes back to live with him and then realizes that the house that she's moved to um, there's still very much the presence of his ex-wife who died and um the housekeeper there is like has loved the ex-wife and very much wants to kind of keep bringing up her presence and always thinks about that so yeah it's definitely an interesting an interesting book and the crime and conflict element is definitely there which I really really enjoyed like I said I personally prefer my cousin Rachel but I know that a lot of people like Rebecca um so yeah I understand why it's on this list and then the other one I've read is The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle which is a Sherlock Holmes novel I actually have the whole series of Sherlock Holmes um I believe on my shelves so um yeah it's definitely one I want to I want to read other Sherlock Holmes but I think The Hound of the Baskervilles so far at least is my favorite one it's, it's definitely the most well known um it basically follows Sherlock Holmes trying to work out what happened when an old man went walking on the moors and is killed by like a demon dog basically and it's kind of about that so it sounds really interesting also from this list I have heard of The Children of Men by P.D. James. I have read P.D. James's um, Death at Pemberley book and I really liked that one so um, I would like to read more P.D. James. I haven't specifically heard of The Children of Men but I feel like the author sounds like someone I'm going to enjoy so I needed to get on that. <laughs> And I've also heard of The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith, again not one that I've read, but I've heard that it has a really good crime element to it, so very much looking forward to that one as well. And then the last section is Rule Breakers, and of this one I have read one, and it is 1984 by George Orwell, which I predicted earlier was going to be on this list somewhere, I was waiting for it to come up. 1984 is um, a world that talks specifically about the big brother effect and it basically is about a world where nobody's allowed to have their own opinions and they all have jobs and they get told what to think and I guess the rule breaking side is that this the main character basically decides that he doesn't want to do that anymore. Um, I didn't particularly like this book because about halfway through there's a manifesto and I get bored because it's so repetitive but um, yeah I know that the actual story is great I just hate that part of it because it's so long it's like 50 pages or something and it's boring um, but yeah and the rest of it's great. So yeah so um, and on that list I've also heard of How to Be Both by Ali Smith. Um, Ali Smith is an author that I have read one book of or tried to which was um, There But For The and I hated it and um, I haven't read anything else by her but let me know if you think I should because I have heard really good things about her writing. And I've also heard of Orlando by Virginia Woolf, another author I haven't read anything by but I've heard amazing things so probably one I need to get to I'm sure. I'm sure. But yeah, this is, um, this has been my really long video. Um, so this has been my video inspired by the wonderful Claudia from the Spinsters Library. So I'll link her video down below. I'd love you to go and check her out. She's going to be my video shout out for this week, uh, for this video. And um, yeah, definitely go and check out her channel because I love her videos. And this one has really been helpful and very much inspired me. I really enjoyed making this video. Um, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know which novels you think have shaped our world. Um, do you agree with these? Have you read any? 
any of the ones from the list do let me know and yes thank you so much for watching it's been a long one i know <laughs> give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i post new videos every monday and friday and sometimes some extra ones in between and i'll see you next time for another video bye guys